of the King's Palace. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory, glory be to God. Well, we have one of our sisters from Nigeria, uh, first in Port Harcourt, King's Palace, also CG in Port Harcourt, but she's in Resurrection Parish, you know, with Pastor Pande, uh, Dr. Uche, um, you know, Brother Ebenezer. So come on, let's celebrate Dickiness, Bethlehem. You're welcome. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our theme has been eternal life uh, this entire month of November. And believe it or not, today is the last Sunday in the month of November. By next Sunday, we'll be in December already. If you are excited to be alive, come and give the Lord another round of applause and say to your neighbor, Happy Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. So within the theme, Eternal Life, in this first service, we will, you know, bring a message titled, The Wonders of Mercy. The Wonders of Mercy. Our text will be from the Gospel, according to St. Luke, chapter 23. I will read from 39 to 43. Luke 23, 39 to 43. I will be reading from the New King James Version. The Lord is speaking to us on the wonders of mercy. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The wonders of mercy. The perilous times described in scriptures are here. I mean, if you read 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 7, 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 7, clearly describe the days and the times that we are in. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, you know, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, you know, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying his power. And from such people turn away, verse 6 is very important. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of godly women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. The perilous times are here. Escaping the troubles in a, tr in a trembling world is by God's mercy. This world is tumbling, is a troubled world, tumbling on a daily basis. The kind of things we hear, it's amazing, it's unbelievable. I mean, if you look at that Second Timothy 3 and verse 6, for of this sort are those who creep into households. The trouble is creeping into households and making captives of gullible women and men too. Loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts. Escaping the troubles in a tumbling world will be by the mercy of God. I mean, in recent past, at least I know three different families that allow the enemy to creep into their home in the name of prophets of course there were false prophets the first one was a woman married to a minister of the gospel and uh, you know, joined this mountain prayer of this fake prophet somehow she was convinced that the husband was using her glory and that was why the husband looks like uh, well known and <laughs> she's a little bit unknown I mean, she took this a bit further. Uh, at the beginning, she left their bedroom and moved to a different room in the house. The husband said, ah, for real? We've been married for how many years? Maybe like 12 years or so. A prophet will convince you that <laughs> I've been using your glory. And they pushed her forward and said, in fact, if you don't leave the house, he will kill you. As I speak to you, they are divorced. And then... You know, a man was sharing his pains with us concerning 
the wife also a different family exactly the same oh that that man is using your glory and then in a different home this time it was the man they said oh if you don't divorce your wife she's going to kill you in fact we have another woman ready for you just drive her out we are in perilous times and those who are gullible women or men will be lured into captivity Fake prophets are entering into households and the gullible are falling for the deception, destroying their homes and families. I tell people, watch which mountain you climb. Not every mountain is the mountain of God. Lamentation 3, 22 and 23. Lamentation 3, 22 and 23 is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion fails not. They are new every morning. Great has been the faithfulness of God. If you are standing, it is only by his mercy. Many have, are, are, are falling on a daily basis. Many are dying. Many are being destroyed. There are wonders of mercy that must be understood by every believer. And I have seven this morning. I will go through them very quickly. I will begin to pray for mercy. The first wonder of mercy, number one, mercy waves a well-deserved death. Or punishment. Mercy waves a well deserved death or punishment. You know the story of David very well in 2 Samuel chapter 11. Now, killed Uriah, the husband of Bathsheba, took the woman. You know the story too well. And if you kill, you are to die. David deserves to die. But in 2 Samuel 12, verse 13, 2 Samuel 12, 13, so David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also had put away your sin. You shall not die. No wonder mercy is named after David. You will hear the scripture says the sure mercies of David. Mercy may spear one in a bunch of sinners and others consumed in their sins. There are five friends, I believe. Four or five of them. Oh, terrible drunkards, terrible womanizers. And they were traveling to another city to go and mess around as usual in sin. They were going to get into the vehicle and the phone of one of them rang. It was, from, it was the mother saying, please come, come, I'm sick, I'm dying, please come. Ah, this fellow loves the mother a lot even in his rottenness. So told the friends that, guys, if you go, I will meet you. Let me quickly see what's wrong with my mother. Ran back to see the mom. By the time he got back to where the, I mean, to see the mom. The woman was all right. He said, hey, why did you send to me? Like that, he said, I was not feeling fine when I called you, but now that I've seen you, I'm okay. Ah, so what a joke is this? Okay, all right, let me go and meet my friends. His phone rang again. And then they said, all your friends died in a motor accident. And they found a number related to him. They said, well, let's check whether, I think they found the number on one of the phones. He said, what, which of them? The same vehicle in which he came down, his friends were going together to go and mess up. All died. At that point, he said, ah, hey, let me run to Jesus. And he gave his life to Christ. Mercy waved the death that that man deserved and saved his soul. May the Lord have mercy on somebody. I can't hear your amen. Mercy can save the chief sinner and the servant sin are consumed. On the way to Damascus, it was Saul of Tarsus and others that were traveling. It wasn't only him, but it was Saul who was saved. Acts 9 verse 7. Acts 9 verse 7. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. Paul, Saul of Tarsus, was the chief sinner. They were only following him. But the chief sinner was saved. And the followers remain unsaved. Mercy waves a well-deserved death or punishment. Saul didn't cry for salvation. God just picked him. to you, I will save you. And those who followed him. Uh... The second wonder of mercy. Mercy protects the exposed. Moses, a, a case in study. If you read Exodus chapter 2 and in verse 5, maybe verses 5 and 6, Exodus 2, 5 and 6, then the daughter of Pharaoh came down.
to bathe at the river. And her maidens walked along the riverside. And when she saw the ark among, you know, the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrew's children. At this time, many children had been killed by Pharaoh. Because all newborn babies of the Jews were to be killed in Egypt. But this young boy called Moses was there helpless. But then mercy protects the exposed. Mercy may shield the exposed from impending danger that consumes the other, though they share the same room. Many years ago, maybe about 10 years now, my wife and I, we were on our way to Dallas to, to have a program. I think it was the elite program. At that time, it was at the, the national level. And my phone rang. And somebody said, uh, my name is Apostle so-and-so. I said, ah, good afternoon, sir, but I don't think we have met. He said, yes, we have not met. He said, why are you calling, sir? He said, I'm calling because of one of our sons. <laughs> I said, which of them? He said, he, he used to worship in my church, but he ran to your church now. He said, really? What's the name? He mentioned the name. I said, I don't know him. My, my wife picked her phone, did something, search on first timers, whatever. And then she found out that this fellow just joined our church two Sundays prior. I said, ah, okay, my wife found the name on newcomers, at uh, least. So what's the problem? He said, well, the man abandoned the wife and ran to your church. So I want to come so that we can <laughs> resolve the matter. I said, that's fine. He can't hide here, having abandoned the wife. No, I won't allow that. So the apostle came. So, by the way, we called this man. And say, Apostle said, you abandoned your wife to hide in our church. The man laughed. He said, that's true. He said, ah, it's true. Why? He said, Pastor, let the Apostle set up the meeting, but he should bring my wife. And then we can talk. The day came, myself, my wife, Pastor Ebuna, the Apostle, uh, the woman, and the man. <laughs> and the man, the man that tell the story. He said, look, I know I'm a very bad man because my original wife, I divorced her and sent her back. But then they sent this woman to me from Nigeria. And one day that he dreamt that he was going to die, so he called the woman that, well, I don't know what's going on. Let's do life policy just in case something happens. Then they found out that this woman had HIV AIDS and had known about it and kept it away from this man. I said, so I said, how do you say, well, I, yeah, I didn't know how to tell you. Ah, okay. So the man went back to do tests. This woman was now pregnant for this man. So the man went to do tests. The man was negative. He said, ah, saying my rottenness. Despite the fact that I pushed away the original wife. Ah, God, you can spare me. I've been sleeping with this woman. She's even pregnant. And I'm negative. He repeated the test over and over again. So, praise God. Say, woman, no problem. You can be here. There will be no issue. But now the woman was doing everything possible to pass the HIV AIDS to him. The moment he discovered that this woman is saying, look, we must have it together. The man ran out of the house. So the fellow looked at me and said, Pastor, what will you do? <laughs> well, let's leave the rest of the story. The main point is that mercy protects the exposed. May the mercy of God always protect every one of us. Let me hear a believing amen. amen. Number three, mercy substitutes one for the other. Mercy substitutes one for the other. Proverbs 11 verse 8. Proverbs 11 verse 8. The righteous is delivered out of trouble and the wicked commit in the stead. Mercy can shift the death meant for one. To our colleague. Oh, mercy may even substitute sibling with another. I mean, Daddy Gio told us a story some, some years ago that a woman came to, to him crying and said, Daddy, please help me. That she had a dream that her husband died. And any time that she dreams, he must come to pass. Now she had dreamt that the husband died. So Daddy Joe said, is your husband born again? And he said, yes, ah, no problem. Let, let's pray and we can cancel the, the death. So Daddy prayed for the woman that your husband will not die. He will live. 
And then on Monday, that was Sunday, on Monday, there was an, uh, a publication in the newspaper that that same last name, someone died. <gasps> Daddy is sorry. I said, ah, but I prayed for this woman. What happened? So Daddy reached out to, to her. Your husband still said, no, it's not my husband. It's my husband's brother that died. Beloved, mercy is a powerful phenomenon. If I had time, I could tell you many more stories of how death meant for one was transferred to another. Now, any evil moving around will not locate you. Mercy will preserve you. Let your amen be a, a, a deserving amen. Now, number four, mercy reverses the irreversible and make the impossible possible. It comes by mercy. There are certain situations in life when you look at it, it looks so impossible. That's the time mercy kicks in. An irreversible affliction requires mercy to be reversed. And impossibilities do not persist where mercy exists. Impossibilities do not persist where mercy exists. I've told you the story of a woman before. When she was a teenager, boys were always running around her. And so the woman, or the mother rather, took her to one herbalist and said, boys are chasing this girl around. I don't want any boy to like him at all. Her rather. No, when they see her, I want men to just run away. So they did the charm. And truly, all through her teenage years and young adulthood, no man moved close to her. Now it's time for her to get married. She's finished her school. So men are still not coming. So she was praying and praying and praying. So the mother wanted to take her so that they can reverse the thing. The abbalist who did it and died. So the mother said, well, then that will be your lot. But thank God, she gave her life to Christ. She began to pray. She began to pray. One day in the place of prayer, a man of God said, go and ask your mother. Your mother will tell you what happened. Went to the mother. Mother said, it's true. Narrated the story. Said, eh, okay. Now I know. It will take mercy for you to get that kind of secret. Now, whatever looks impossible in your life, I am praying that the mercy of God will reverse every impossibility. Amen. Let me hear I really believe in amen. amen. The fifth wonder of mercy, number five. Mercy says no. And mercy must have its way. When the victim is stubborn, mercy is more stubborn to deliver. Lord and his family he said, get out of here. The Lord is showing you mercy. The Bible said they lingered. Genesis 19. Genesis 19, 15 and 16. Genesis 19, 15 and 16. When the money dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And while he lingered, the man took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of his two daughters. The Lord be merciful to him. And they brought him out and set him outside the city. Even when you linger, mercy will insist that no, you will not be destroyed. Mercy must have its way. You know the story of that pastor who was on that ADC, I think it was Bellevue flight in 2005. The man was seated right in the front. And then the flight to travel after the Bellevue flight was aero contractors. The pilots got there. I said, ah, my old friend, what are you doing? He said, I'm going to Abuja. Ah, you won't go in this one. He said, the engine is rolling already. He said, yes, don't worry. This pilot is my friend. They will check. They will bring your luggage out. He said, no, don't worry. I will see you in Abuja. I said, no, you, you will fly on my flight. We've not seen for a long time. You must fly. I must, you must be on my flight. The pilot dragged him literally out of the Bellevue flight into the aero contractor's flight. 45 minutes after, the Bellevue flight had crashed. Everybody died. What was the pilot of aero contractor doing in the plane of Bellevue? Except that God sent him to go and bring this fellow out. I am praying that mercy will reach out to somebody today. In the mighty name of Jesus. You see, Elijah demanded to die, but he was fed and strengthened. First Kings 19, 4 and 5. But Samson demanded to die. His desire was granted. I'm on number six now, the sixth wonder. 
The sixth wonder, mercy is selective. Mercy is selective. Mercy is selective. Romans 9, 14, 15, and 16. Romans 9, 14 to 16. What shall ye say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he had said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showed mercy. Number six wonder, mercy is selective. Elijah said, let me die. I'm not better than my fathers. First Kings 19, 4 and 5. Samson demanded to die. God said, die. Judges 16, 30. The Shunammite woman was offensive. She said to Elisha, in 2 Kings 4, 16 and 17, Elisha had prophesied that according to the season of life, you will have a son. The woman said, man of God, don't lie to me. Ah, you can call a man of God any name, but don't say a man of God is a liar. But the no-nonsense Elisha pretended he didn't hear this woman. But when you get to 2 Kings 7, 1 and 2, the officer of the, of the king, when Elisha, the same Elisha, prophesied, said, by this time tomorrow, there will be abundance in the gates of Samaria. The man said, uh-uh. Even if God were to open the window of heaven, can this thing be? Ah! The same Elisha. He said, you will see with your eyes. You will not eat. The man died. 2 Kings 7, 1 and 2. The same Elisha, some young children were calling him bald a dead man bald a dead man he cursed them for the two children died in a row Elisha was a no nonsense man of God but this woman got mercy said man of God you are lying Elisha said lie or no lie you will have the baby and she got the baby mercy can be selective and number seven finally the seventh, the seventh wonder eternal life in heaven with Christ is by mercy Making it to eternity in Christ can only be by God's mercy. In James chapter 2 verse 10, James 2 verse 10 from the Amplified Version. For whoever keeps the old law but stumbles in one point, he has become guilty of breaking all of the law. The two criminals on the cross, all, the two of them were condemned to hell. But at the very last minute, one obtained mercy and assured of eternal life in heaven with Christ. The other remained condemned to hell eternally. The two criminals on the cross could have been saved from eternal damnation, but one was saved and the other condemned. But why? Just three quick points and I'll be done. The key of asking. That one said, please remember me in your kingdom. You must ask for mercy to get mercy. Blind Bartimaeus said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Mark 10, verse 47. This morning, we are going to cry for mercy. Number two, you can sow mercy to reap mercy. You know, this other criminal on the right said, what's wrong with you? We did wrong. That's, what, that's, what, that's why we are here. This man is innocent. He was kind in his words to Jesus. The other was harsh in his word to Jesus. You are not merciful. Forget about having mercy. That's why every day you must sow mercy into other people's life. Be kind, be gracious in your words to people. It's a seed. You sow mercy, you reap mercy. Matthew 5 verse 7. Matthew 5 verse 7. Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. The difference between the two thieves with Jesus is that one was kind, gracious and merciful, but the other was cruel, unkind, and a mocker. Finally, number three, confession opens door to mercy. Confession opens door to mercy. Proverbs 20 verse 13. He who uh, covers his sin will not prosper. But whosoever will confess his sins and forsake them will have mercy. That's why this morning I'm trusting God for someone who will open up on his sin. That fellow said, hey, young man, we sin. That's why we got on the cross. You and I know that. But this man is not a sinner. The day you open up your sin, the day you get mercy. A young girl broke the plate of the mother. And the house, housemaid saw her. He said, hey, I will tell mommy. He said, please don't tell mommy. Yeah, if I don't tell mommy, then you must give me your breakfast every morning. He said, no, not a problem. She kept giving the breakfast to the maid and was growing lean. One day she was tired. 
I said, ah, we go and tell mommy. She told the mother. The mother said, come on, you should have told me long ago. That's why you have been lean. The following day, the maid came and said, I will tell mommy. Said, ah, go and tell mommy. I won't give my breakfast anymore. The devil has been telling you, keep short. Don't let them know you have been fornicating. Don't let them know you are a liar. Don't let them know you are secret sin. And you are groaning lean spiritually, dying spiritually. Why won't you confess the sin? The man on the cross had two, the thief on the cross had two minutes to hell. But God spared him because he sowed mercy. He asked for mercy. He opened up on his sin. Won't you do the same to have mercy? Let's rise and cry to God with everything in you. Say, Father, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Mercy can waive death that you so deserve. Mercy can substitute. The phenomenon of mercy is powerful. That was not how Bartimaeus cried for mercy. By now, I thought somebody would be yelling and crying to God and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Oh, Bartimaeus cried to God with everything in him and said, Please have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy on me. Will somebody ask for mercy? Will somebody ask for mercy? Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you are here, you know you are a sinner. You have been hiding it. The devil has been cheating you. You are growing lean in your soul. You are growing lean in your spirit. Open it up now. Say, Jesus, I'm here. Have mercy on me. Save my soul. I know I'm a sinner. Raise your hand up if you want to give your life to Jesus. Let him see your hands up. Stop living in secrecy. The devil will destroy anyone in secrecy. Just raise your hand. Either you are here or in the virtual church. My Lord and my God, I thank you for your word. And if there be anyone saying, have mercy on me this morning. And that because they are in secret sin and they need to surrender their life to you. Father, please have mercy in the name of Jesus. You save the soul of soul of Tarsus. Father, save the souls of these ones in the mighty name of Jesus. And for every one of us, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on our family. Have mercy on our church. Have mercy on our nation. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Jesus, mighty name, we have prayed. Well, let's give the Lord a big hand and take a seat. Our time is far gone, so let's quickly bring out our tithes and our offerings and all that we have brought unto the Lord. And believe in God to give us mercy on a daily basis in the mighty name of Jesus. While we prepare our tithes and our offerings, I want to remind us that one state as of praise is now 27 days. We have 27 days to December 24th. Glory be to God. Now the seven days fasting that our Father and the Lord General Vasia called started yesterday. We came to pray here yesterday evening. Today we will come also at 6 o'clock to 7. As many as can make it to church. It will not be streamed. So if you can't make it to church, you do your prayer at home. But one hour prayers will be here, to, uh, in, I think in the youth church, for one hour, six to seven. I welcome you to join us to pray for one hour. Of course, on Monday, I decided it will be for seven. But again, we'll do six to seven on Monday. On Tuesday, also will be six to seven. Because the time of Bible study can't adequately cater for the one hour of prayer. So we'll pray six to seven today. Monday, six to seven. Tuesday, six to seven. Wednesday, 6 to 7. It will be 6 to 7, as again, 7 for as many as can make it. Then on Thursday, as you know, we are going to start the retreat at the Better Ranch uh, from 6 p.m. Thursday, December 1st, you know, to the early hours of Saturday morning, uh, you know, third. Okay? So let's, let's plan for all these programs. Evan Yeshita will be ministering by God's grace, myself, uh, Baba Molei. And um, a, a few other ministers. Some had asked questions, are we supposed to pay for it? No, I know there's a flyer that suggests that from, you know, from the planning team. But for every member of the King's Palace, nobody is going to pay. Uh, we will just register here so that we know you are going and you don't have to pay. Uh, but because it's a combined program, you know, uh, between 
um, you know, Kingdom Power Church, uh, the Ministry of Reverend Chita and ourselves, I think they have some people coming and they are to register by paying. But for our church, nobody will have to pay, all right? The gala night is going to be, as you know, 4 p.m. December the 3rd. Please make sure you register. The planning committee needs to assign pre-assigned seats. There's no reason why you shouldn't be there. If you're a member of this family, we are coming together to rejoice. It's going to be at the pavilion. If you are here to register, please register. If you are not on the church WhatsApp group, right after now, ask an usher or Pastor Buna or any of us on how to do that so that you can get the link to register for the Gala Night. Let's rise up now. We take our tithes and offerings and then we'll close the first service.